Hey, it's me, Javine. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's Play Enderall Forgotten Stories. In the last episode, we finally made it to Ark, and we're sort of exploring it, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and launch the main quest here, which um, is very big. As I mentioned at the end of the last episode, there, there's gonna be a lot of dialogue in this one. A lot of dialogue, but I will say that it is quite interesting. Um, and honestly, it, it's, and I'm not just saying this because this is what we're doing right now on the channel, the story for this game is, is interesting than a lot of other fantasy RPGs, in my opinion. So, we'll go ahead and take a look at them. Uh, look at it. Jasparda, Varric, and I safely reached Ark, the Jewel of the Heartland, and the biggest city of Enderal, on Enderal. I should meet him in the marketplace when I'm ready for having my... When I'm ready for having my fever examined by his employers. Follow Jaspar to the Temple's Mages, and that's what we're doing right now. Jaspar is directly ahead of us. Let's go, pal. This is holy ground, Outlander. You don't belong here. Thanks, man. That shows that you're really, really open-minded. Uh, and yeah, I I've been told that I'm an Outlander and that I don't belong in pretty much every RPG I think I've ever laid hands on, so I am used to it. You do you. If you want to be a jerk, that's all... that's all good. Yeah. This is holy ground, Outlander. You do not belong. Oh, that's interesting. They do the same thing that Skyrim does, where they have the same vocal lines, but it's just different voice actors. Without explicit permission. Who are you, and what leads you to this holy place? Business. I'm Jaspar Belveric, and I work for the Naramese Mages. Oh, right. The mercenary. And who's your companion? Marijo de Luna from Ostian. Esteemed holder of de Luna's Empire of Tender Fragrance, the most prestigious perfumery in all of Vin. Archmagister Marigil sent for him. Didn't he tell you? The Archmagister? Um, well, that does sound like him. Hmm. Fair enough, he may pass. But show this place the respect it deserves, Miss Mary. You too, Maester de Luna. You have my word, fair lady. Thank you. Oh, that bow animation was so smooth. Okay, so we are not who we say that we are, or at least we are not who Jaspar is saying that we are. And check this out. I mean, my god. Yeah, I, I, Never mind. I'm not going to say what I was about what is what I was about to say. Just know that this looks so cool. I mean, look at that. In fact, it looks so cool. Actually, no. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Let's go. Waiting on you, bud, because I know that you got to go through the big, big old doors before I set foot through them. Whatever you look, where is this supposed to be? Hey, that was the uh, voice actor of that opening cutscene with the uh, the little animated sort of thing. That was the same guy. Now check this out. Ooh. Well, that went better than expected. Mario de Luna's Empire of Tender Fragrance. Hey, it worked, didn't it? That's all that matters. Nobody will suspect someone who's already in the temple. Anyway, I think it's about time I tell you a little bit more about this employer of mine. His name is Constantine Firespark, and he's one of Marath's Orenthiel's former followers, which the new Grand Master, Teal Orenthiel, brought here by ship about two years ago. That means he's one of the former arch enemies of the Order. They usually wear green, while the Order wears white or red. That should make it easy for you to tell them apart. Firespark's pretty much the eldest of Narathsul's mages, and quite well versed in magic, at least from what I've heard. Plus, he's a very gentle and likable fellow, which is why even the Keepers like having him around. Let's hope he can tell us a thing or two about these visions, and help you get rid of the fever. Come, follow me. And I think we will get our fever entirely expunged, even though it's still a mechanic in the game, I believe. Which is awesome, because we have a decent amount of fever at the moment. Man, Jaspar really does not like going through doors. <laughs> Until, like, I nudge him along. Okay, so this is the Sun Temple, and it's magnificent. It's very, very cool, and there's... Just the layout is, is very nice, and there's all sorts of inside buildings as well. Um, inside, <laughs> inside buildings. There's also sorts of interiors with different purposes. I remember having frame rate issues in this room with my old PC as well, so yeah, it must just be the game... Yeah, it must just be the game. I, I don't know if there's any way around the frame rate drops. Unreliable. That's what they are. All of them. All right, here we are. Hmm. Hang on. No, 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 no. That's not how you do it. Blasted. I'm just being careful. We like have to. Like that we do. 
Give me that thing, now! <laughs> Blasted, blistering blazes! I... Uh, that's what you get for working with fumblers. I <clears> told you, <throat> we should fire be spot. careful. What? Now who the heck are you? Can't an old man have a moment to himself? Um, you hired me. The Magister, don't you remember? Oh, right. Huh? Joseph the Scrounger. So why are you here? Had any luck? Just spar. And yeah, we did find something. I... Suggest you first of all tell me when I allowed you to drag your drinking mates up here. Do you need me to explain the meaning of the words highly and confidential to you? I'm sure there's a lot you can explain to me, but let's save that for later. This particular fellow over here needs your help, to be frank. Arcane fever. Is that so? And what exactly has that got to do with me? Let the Keepers and their holy rituals take care of it. What is it with the costume, anyway? This man's magic is different, Meiser. Just feel his aura and you'll see it. Plus, he's from Nerim, just as you are. Eh. Uh, well, all right then, for nostalgia's sake. I really hope you're not wasting my time, though. Working with these religious buffoons is bound to make any rational thinking person go bonkers. Anyway, that chair over there. Take a seat, and I'll have a look at that fever of yours. Okay, it's been quite a while since we've sat down, so that's welcome. All right, then. This will tickle a little. Hmm. Now you're right. This aura does feel different. Complex somehow, and... Hmm, powerful. And do you really want to tell me you've only recently discovered that talent of yours? With that aura, I'm surprised that you haven't turned into an Obaya by now. Hmm. Fine, fine. I, I, well, that is, we will help you. But first, tell me everything. How you got that magic, and how you met that scrounger. Just Bar's not a scrounger. He's quite a nice gentleman. Hmm, I see. Regarding this vision thing, I think that your mind simply played a trick on you there. Not that it's much of a surprise, considering what you've been through. Actually, you were quite lucky that the sudden outburst of your glance didn't blow your head right off. Sudden outburst of my glance. What's a glance? Oh, uh, by all that's holy. I won't start playing your tutor now. If you don't know about the basic functioning of magic, then read something from Balador Goldenstein. He... The glance on the sea of eventualities. Alongside, but apart from the reality we're in right now, exist countless other realities, in which some events have different outcomes, so to speak. A version of this very same room, for example, with the very same people in it, only that Meiser Firespark's beard is on fire. And what defines an arcanist, someone capable of magic, is that he or she can see those other realities and let parts of them come true. Well, look at that, Jasper. You surprise me. That's what I'm being paid for. How powerful an arcanist is depends on three factors. How far away are the eventualities that he can see, how well he can bring parts of them into our reality, and finally, how well his mind can handle seeing other realities simultaneously with ours. Lighting a candle is easier than calling a meteor from the sky to speak plain in Al, but as I said, read Goldenstein if you're interested in the topic. I'm not going to waste any time with lectures. And honestly, I appreciate that, man. Uh, I think that's how most RPGs should lay down the lore. Like, there should be a book. If you want to learn learn more about it, read the book. Otherwise, let's keep it moving. And this chapel on the water. Every time I touch one of those stones, I feel as if... I don't know. As if something comes back to me. And I think that's referring to the, the memory points. The, the stones that we've been adding perks with. Well, that's probably a sign that you should go easier on the booze. Skill, whether of physical or magical nature isn't gained through touching some stones, but through hard work and discipline. Even though this screwball Endrelay and talk of paths and 
predeterminations tries to tell us otherwise. Again, I did not just imagine these visions. They felt different. Somehow real. Ah, uh, well, if that's what you want to believe, go for it. I, in any case, have never come across such a phenomenon in over 50 years of studying magic. And now we should... It all begins with the dreams. What the? Blasted, blistering blazes! Does this room look like the bosom of a whore to you? Or what makes you think you can go around touching anything you get your fingers on? These documents are confidential for heck's sake. I knew it was a mistake to hire a thug like you. Lashery always had a weakness for- Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you telling me something about dreams that led you and Teal or Renthiel here, didn't you, my sir? And you told me that in this vision of yours, the Veiled Woman said this. It all begins with the dreams. Well, does it? Uh-oh. Did this guy ruin everything? What? Is that true? It is, actually. Oh. Then, this near-death experience you had before you woke up on the shore. Tell me again, what exactly did you see in it? A room? A glistening white light and charred bodies, but their flesh was unnatural, gray, and I heard all of these voices. Hmm. Well, this... this is strange, indeed. Anyway, for now all that matters is that we get that magic of yours under control. Whatever you clairvoyance back there is of no use to us if you're dead as a doornail in a couple of months. And how can we do that? Get my magic under control. Well, that's usually a plodding process. The fever you feel is a result of your mind not being able to handle all of these possibilities, so to speak. The ritual the Endraleans practice to get the glance under control is called the journey to the water. Put frankly, it means one year of hour-long meditation, bland food, and abstinence from anything that makes life worth living. In due time, the Arcanist then learns to filter these other realities from ours, and the fever gets less and less. Anyhow, luckily enough, we Neremese know of a way to quicken that process. A shortcut, if you will. I'm not capable of performing it, but another one of us is. Her name is Lashery. And you should seek her out as soon as possible. A shortcut? Isn't there a reason this journey to the water is as lengthy as it is? There is indeed, and this reason is called ignorance. The Order's rituals haven't changed since the Lightborn slipped out of their cradles, and the Keepers do their best to keep anything progressive out of their country. But please, if you're up for a year of austerity and stern-faced Magisters scolding you, go for it. I really don't care. All right then, I'll do this ritual of yours. Where can I find this Lashiri? She's currently in a ruin called Old Rationgrad, not far from Ark. Just tell her that I sent you. Ah, give me that map of yours. Okay, now you'd have to be a total idiot to miss it. I recommend leaving for the ruin straight away. And you, Joseph, you're going to come with me and show me what your trip to the Sun Coast brought forth. Hopefully, more than a bottle of honey wine and a hangover. Okay, folks. Actually, I just heard my doorbell ring. I'm going to uh, go check and see if it's an emergency or anything, and I will be right back. Okay, my girlfriend and I cook a lot together, and she bought me a set of nice pepper and salt grinders so that whenever we put some pepper in there, it's not with my shitty, uh, bad pepper grinder. So that's what that was, just the delivery. But it was supposed to come yesterday, which is why I wasn't expecting it. Nevertheless... Quite a character, isn't he? But I like him somehow. Here, I owe you this for your help back in Riverville. Uh, and in case you're in the mood for a mug of ale and a good chat, just drop by the Dancing Nomad in the Stranger's Quarter. I'll get myself a room there for the time being. With all that said, good luck mastering your magic, my friend. I'll see you around. 
During the main story of Enderal, you have the opportunity to deepen your bond to several persons. Caution, these missions aren't available forever. If the main story progresses too far, the storylines of some persons stay hidden. Okay, we just got 100 penny coins, a scroll to teleport to the Sun Temple, uh, two of those, and uh, two scrolls to teleport to Ark. Uh, a lot of revelations and a lot of just stuff. Let's take a look at our quest, shall we? Every day like the last part one. Okay, after Jaspar delivered us, uh, Fire Spark offered to meet me in the Dancing Nomad in good time. A good opportunity to get to know him. Oh, this is the companion quest for Jaspar. We've got this one. Constantine said, The young mage called Lashiri can heal my arcane fever with a special ritual, and by doing so, help me to learn the, to control my magic without years of meditation. She currently leads an excavation site in the northern heartlands called Old Rashengrad. So that is the main, main quest there. Ascertain what depresses Master Rhaegon. That, I think, is a side quest. Uh, we've got this side quest, and then we've got all this other stuff. So... First and foremost, we're going to do this one. Uh, for people that just hate the dialogue, I am sorry. This is going to be probably the biggest dialogue-heavy episode, maybe until the finale. I don't know. Like I said, this is going to be a blind playthrough once we catch up to where we were, so I have no idea. But I know that at least during these couple episodes, yeah, the dialogue is very heavy. Uh, so let's do this one. After the mercenary Jaspar Delveric delivered me safe and sound to the Neremese mage Constantine Firespark, he offered me to meet in the Dancing Nomad in good time. Good opportunity to get him to, uh, to get to know him better. Search for Jaspar in the Dancing Nomad. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Um, I like Jaspar a lot. I honestly think that he beats out quite a bit of companions in other video games, um, which is amazing because. First of all, I hate companions, and I never like using them in any video game ever because they always weigh me down, and they always just make everything annoying. But, Jaspar here is actually a really uh, well-created companion, in my opinion, and I would like to make as many friends as we possibly can. So, let's go ahead and use this signpost here. We're going to travel to the marketplace, which is where Jaspar said to meet him. And we can learn a little bit more about him, which I do think uh, gives us some extra stuff. Uh, so I would really like to do it. Also, let's make sure that we have that quest activated. Yeah, search for Jaspar in the Dancing Nomad. Now, given how weird Jaspar's movements have been, I hope that he's actually in here. We shall see. Let's also save the game. And in we go. To the fort? Wait, to the foreign quarter. Oh, I guess he was in the foreign quarter, not the marketplace. Okay, so here's the foreign quarter. And let's hope that we see an entrance to some sort of tavern. That looks like an entrance to some sort of tavern. The Dancing Nomad, yes indeed. I wish there was a little bit... Man, if there's a perk that gives us some health regen, we gotta go for that. Because, yeah, having no health regen in this game is just so... An outlander. So Isn't different. Nice. The offer stands. Just think about it, okay? I will. Take care. Hey, you came. Come on, take a seat. So, tell me, how are you holding up? It must have been quite the whirlwind. Yesterday, a refugee from another country, and now a prodigy with a magic great enough to impress old Bushybeard. Yeah, I'm sorry. These two people over to my left are like in perfect sync as they're dancing. It's just a little jarring. Honestly, I'm still trying to make sense of all of this. Good luck with that. I'm quite curious to see how things keep on with you. You're different. I noticed that the time we met. Anyhow, tell me, what do you make of this country now that you've had some time to look around? I figure it must be quite the change from Nerim. Tell Jaspar about the recent events. Well, you're right about that. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, I can picture that. You know, this is exactly the reason why I love inns so much. The sky can rain fire out there. In here, you'll always meet laughter and good humor. Not to mention all the good-looking men and women. So this is, if I remember right, where we actually decide what our sexual orientation is. I didn't really think about it before making this character because I forgot that this was a component. So, a richly set table indeed. I guess that means that we're bisexual. We like everything. Some of the ladies are not to be scoffed at. Some of the men are not to be scoffed at. You don't feel much of all this red madness thing in here, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I guess it's not really pertinent to choose one of these just yet. 
Um, I think our character is going to be heterosexual. Usually the characters that I play are sort of a, you know, some, in some resemblance to, to me, which is why I usually make them all brown-haired, brown-eyed, brown extremely handsome. You don't feel much of all this red madness thing in here, that's for sure. Yeah, you don't. Though I think I've seen enough of this place by now. Of Enderol, I mean. There's a ship sailing for Kile next morning. And as it seems, it will be the last one for quite some time to come. Who knows? Maybe they still have a cabin to spare for a handsome treasure hunter. What, you want to leave? In spite of all that's happening? <laughs> oh well. This entire thing was more a coincidence than planned anyhow. The Order needed someone with skill and discretion. I was around. End of story. I never intended to stick around for much longer. Heck, <laughs> me as an ambassador of the Holy Order? Could you imagine that? Not one step further, O oh fair maiden. Drop your garment so we may both bathe in Malphys' holy light. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, not that bad, don't you think? Very convincing. Oh, you're too kind. But you know, at the end of the day, I guess I'd probably lack both the pathos and the idealism for such a profession. You know, I'm aware of how these esteemed keepers up there talk about sellswords like me. I could save 30 virgins from a myrid on Rampage. At the end of the day, they'd always say I did it for the money, because I wanted to bet the women, or whatever. I'm driven by inferior motives. While no matter what their actions end in, they are good guys, because they do things for the right reasons. If only they'd understand that it's results that matter, not intentions. What does the wise hermit say? Nothing is of less importance to the saved than the reason for their rescue. The only difference between a mercenary like me and a holy warden is that I'm at least aware of the fact that I do what I do for myself and no one else. What exactly are you trying to say? I'm trying to say that all those heroes and self-declared messiahs are no better than everyone else. In the end, we are all selfish because we always act in accordance to what we think we have to be like. So yes, maybe the Keeper saves the farmer from the bandits, but at the end of the day, he does it because he sees himself in a certain light. You know, the funny thing is that a lot of times, it's especially those who think of themselves driven by a higher purpose or the really dangerous ones. They don't understand what drives them, and that makes them easy to manipulate. The only thing left to do for the capable hate monger or tyrant is to somehow combine his own ambitions with the mental image of this person. And presto, you've got your perfect puppet, only waiting to dive into the next hail of arrows for their honor, their religion, or whatever they thought of this time. It's just so... idiotic, you know? The world would be a much better place if everyone could just acknowledge that the only reason we're here is that we want to be happy. So I actually really agree. Uh, this is this is also why I like Jaspar quite a bit because his ideologies make a lot of sense to me. So we've got like a more option here. Oh no, don't glitch out. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we can engage him in this very big conversation, which I guess we're gonna have to now, uh, considering it's not letting me go back. How can you be so sure that there's no other purpose in our life? No other reason for our existence? I don't know. Call it a feeling. But if there is such a thing as a universal point to our lives, then I'm pretty sure we won't find it within the pre-digested philosophies or religions most people believe in. And hey, I'd be the last one to reject this great truth if she were to knock on my door naked and tits jiggling. But until then, I'd rather try and find my own answers. It's interesting that they've added this, like, more and return option, because it takes a long time to load. There's a sense in that, I'll admit. Really? I was half expecting you to throw insults at me. That's what people usually do when I tell them that. But I guess life is full of surprises. <laughs> anyway, I'll take my leave now. I very much enjoyed our talk. But the ship to Kile leaves before the first Cox Crow tomorrow, and I want some more time to think about it. Okay, so, like I said, I think we're gonna go with a heterosexual route, uh, yeah, with a heterosexual route, because I wanna see, uh, which females we can actually romance. I believe there is romance options in this game, and I'm pretty sure you can romance Jaspar. 
Uh, but this option here is definitely flirting. Uh, but we're gonna go with this one. Do that. I'll see you around. Keep your chin up. Okay, we also got some uh, experience up there in the top left. 500, in fact. So that wasn't for anything, if anybody was just sitting through it like, Oh my god, when does the dialogue end? We do actually get a, a decent chunk of, uh, chunk of experience uh, through that. And uh, we're very close to another level up. And as I've said many times, this game is just really hard. So you definitely want to do the stuff that you can do. Uh, you know off the bat to get that ex to get those experience points because otherwise you will definitely see That you're gonna get overtaken with the difficulty. So we have some options here um, This is the main quest again. This is a side quest. This is a side quest like I said, so let's do This one eventualities ascertain what depresses magister Rhaegon. Uh a lot of these quests I have done considering you know most people are gonna get them uh, when they first start Enderol. So, yeah, once we really get things cleaned up in the city, that'll be when, you know, we start to delve into, uh, what I have not seen at all. So, let's go to the Sun Temple, which is where Rhaegon is, I believe. Rhaegon, Tar Rhaegon Targaryen. Um, yeah, so over this way. I think I remember what this quest deals with, but it might be pretty tricky to figure out how to solve it. I always forget how to... I, I think I've solved this quest now. This will be like the third time. But I think I'm going to forget, unfortunately, how to solve it. And you'll see what I mean in a second, if I am correct. So he is on the top floor, it would seem. Let's hope he knows what he's doing. Yeah, this just doesn't Walk blessed. Is there some kind of problem? Oh, yes. Guess what? There is. Some people just don't get the meaning of the word reliability. Who are you talking about? Maybe I can help. Huh. You're not from the Order, are you? Then I wonder what the blazes you're doing here. But, fine. Who am I to reject a helping hand? Elia, the novice who was assigned to me. She's supposed to help me transcribe these Pyrian tomes the Grand Master is so obsessed about. But two days ago, she simply vanished. If I were to guess, I'd say she's strolling around enjoying herself somewhere in the nobles' quarter. I'd go look myself, but I'm lucky if I get to breathe within all this work. Go find her, and tell her to get her bloody ass up here and help me. If you do that, it won't be to your disadvantage. Okay, find the missing novice Elia and Ark and persuade her to return to the temple. Now, what's interesting is that he said she was in the uh, noble's quarter, but I don't think she actually is, which is bad game design in my opinion, because uh, uh, an astute player would think that that's his hint if they're paying attention to the dialogue that, okay, so she's in the noble's quarter. Yes. But I don't think she is. I could be wrong. Like I said, I always oh get confused here, um, <laughs> even though I've done this quest, like, I think two two times now. But we're going to go to the foreign quarter, which is where I actually think she is. I think I remember the area where she's at. So basically, I just have to see if um, one of these quarters have has that specific area. And it could. Just keeping an eye out for a certain thing. It's an area that kind of looks like this. Huh? What do you want here? Oh, shit, boy. But is not this. Or maybe is she in the noble's quarter? I mean, that would make the most sense. Why would they say he thought she was there, but she's not actually there? That wouldn't make much sense, would it? So maybe we should head on over to the noble's quarter, actually. So weird hearing that person talk because I just keep thinking they're that kid. Oh, come on, man. Can I really not? We are so close. Just let me do it. Okay, this works. Maybe they even put those hay bales there to let us do that. That would be quite nice. So, where are the signposts again? Okay, there's one. Alright, let's go to... Yeah, let's go to the Noble's Quarter. Let's see if that actually is where they sent this person. I do remember what they're doing. Yeah, this does look familiar. Who are you? Yeah, this does look familiar. So this might be places. where it is. I do remember what they're doing. Um, gosh, I hope so. I don't want to be stuck on this quest again for like a third dang time just because my memory is so awful. Uh, so yeah, I think if she is here, 
Then she's gonna be back over here and to the left, maybe? Hello, doggy. Okay, this is looking quite familiar. Um, that goes to the marketplace, though. Yeah, we'll know her when we see her, I do believe. Yeah, she's not here either. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, um... Hmm. Is she really not in the noble's quarter? I, ah, see, every time it's the same exact thing. And there's really nothing to go on either. Oh, unless maybe we can ask people about her. Give ten pent no. Let's ask a guard, perhaps. Maybe that'll help us. Yes? And eh, nobody's really talking to me. Yes? Have you heard the news about the Magister? Lord has been What? Yeah, nobody's really giving me anything. So, I'm gonna look for her myself and I'll see you guys in just one second. I don't like to end a video on failure. Be right back. Okay, folks, so I'm gonna take a chance here. I do believe I'm correct. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, he says the Nobles Quarter. I don't know why he says that because I think she is in the Barracks Quarter, uh, which I'm not even sure how to get to organically without using the signpost. Uh, yeah, this does look familiar. Okay, we are so close to leveling up as well. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I was looking for a cemetery. Here's the cemetery. So yeah, she's in the, the barracks quarter. I don't know why they mislead you by saying the nobles quarter, but nevertheless. <sighs> Magister Ragon sent me. He's missing you in the temple. <laughs> Good for him. What's the matter? Something wrong with you? No, I'm perfectly fine. This is a grave. I'm kneeling in front of it. Of it couldn't be better. I'm sorry. You didn't deserve that. Oh, I just... I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Whose grave is this? My sister. Gadea. She... I, I don't know if you've heard about it. But there was this... Incident in the temple. The Red Madness. Magister Euro. And you've heard about it. My sister. She was a novice, just as I am. And she. You know, she met this boy. He was well, only of the manufacturer's path, and neither our parents nor the case, Holy Order would have approved. <sighs> she wanted to See leave the city now. with him. Travelable lands. Just like in the Bard songs. <laughs> I called her a fool. You're here. I told her that it was our Isn't path to serve the Order, surprise? and that leaving here would be a sin. Is. Three days later, it happened. How are you faring? She Fine. sat in the first Thank row you. in Europe. I have never been better. Thank you. You know. So you blame yourself for her death. <laughs> you say it as if it were far-fetched. But it is my fault. Without me, she would be with that boy in Dunville. Building a new life. It is my fault she was in the lecture that day. No matter how I twist and turn it, this is how it is. Nobody could have seen that coming. If something is to blame, it is the Red Madness or Euro himself. Easy for you to say. Anyway, I should go back to the temple. Thank you for your words. Okay. Have a cup of tea. So these ladies need Someday. to shut the hell up. I most certainly will. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, very sad story. That that's tying back to the the initial um, tragedy that happened that kind of got us started on this main quest. So we'll return to that dude in the next episode and finish off this quest and start some new ones as well. Uh, we're gonna end this episode here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.